2K Sports pregame show. Welcome to 2K Sports, everybody. I'm Ernie Johnson, sitting alongside the big diesel, Shaquille O'Neal, and the prop plane, Kenny Smith. Tonight, we'll be watching the Indiana Pacers playing against the Milwaukee Bucks. Well, for Milwaukee, nice job they've been doing over the last 10 games. Eight wins and not having too many problems. So we're right around halfway through the season. Jack, a lot of trade discussions happening. What are your keys to making a great deal? Well, it depends on your goal. You want to win now? You want to win later? A combination of both? Does your analysis ever make changes out of emotion? Well, acquiring players that fit your system. You have to have a system first. That's the key. And if your trade looks too good to be true, it probably is. I meant to say, do your analysis. Never make changes out of emotion. Okay. See, I was oh. emotional when I was talking about it. Well, yeah, I heard I you. I, I, I understood it. I understood All right. it. You did? Uh, not really, but. Me either. Uh, and now with the tip off, coming up shortly, it's time to send it to Kevin Harlan for the call. The tallest building in the state of Indiana, the Chase Tower. Rising high above our location today at Banker's Life Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. Hi, everyone. Time to get into it. NBA action on 2K Sports. This is Kevin Harlan with Greg Anthony, Brent Berry, and David Aldridge. Special treat for our viewers this evening. The sports guy, Bill Simmons, is with us. It's half of a special treat as Brent Berry is, but I'll, I'm going to do my best. Brent Berry's pretty good. He's really good yeah. at stuff. Yeah. yeah. He reads you a lot. Half a treat is better than a whole treat, right? I mean, come on. <laughs> Honored to be here. The Milwaukee Bucks come into this one after the win against the Cleveland Cavaliers. And they put it all together in that game. It added up to a phenomenal win. And if you look at the box score from that game, guys, the first thing you'll notice is how many turnovers they forced. Well, all those turnovers made it a scrappy game, which suits them. They caused a lot of chaos with their defense, which played right into their hands. Now it's ended down to David Aldridge, standing by from the sidelines. David? Well, guys, Giannis Adentacumpo is the Bucks' first All-Star since Michael Red back in 2004. Now the lefty Red said... I've never seen anybody like him. It's almost like he's from another planet. It won't be hard for him to attract talent here. I just want a ring, and they get a ring. Kevin? And the Bucks just won title back in 1971. DA, thank you. And you look at the talent level, Bill, for the Bucks, very high. Some people felt they underachieved last season. What do you think? Well, they had some coaching issues, and by issues, I mean they barely had a coach. And right. this year they have addressed that and tried to get a more competent coach. But, you know, I think when you fire a coach midseason, then you bring in a new point guard midseason, you have a young player who's not quite ready to be a super-duper star yet. It was predictably rocky. I thought they should have beaten the Celtics in the first round. They just kind of weren't ready to do it yet, and they got out coached. Great analysis. Here are the starters for Milwaukee. Middleton and Giannis are your small and power forwards. Malcolm Brogdon out there at Bloodsoe. And it's Lopez in at the five, roaming the paint. And so the Milwaukee Bucks get the first points of the ballgame. And Young kicks to Oladipo. Lays it up and banks it in. I like seeing Oladipo around the rim using the lift inside. Brogdon against Oladipo. Brogdon the pass to Lopez. Turner against Brogdon. Good, and the assist goes to Middleton. Brogdon's got his first two points. Well, Middleton right now staying aware of where his teammates are and hitting them when they're open. Oladipo finds Turner. Terrific assist, a nice finish. Solid play all around. I give a ton of credit to the screener there. That was a perfect pick to give his teammate the space to knock down the shot. Lopez outside. Ludzo against Collison. Ludzo passes to Middleton. Lock at six. Tries it from the top of the key. Misses off the left eye. For the Pacers, they come in off a loss to the Wizards. Loads it up for Young. The kick out to Oladipo. Off target from the wing. 
Yeah, bad shot there. The trust is lacking. You, you got to be willing to make the extra pass. Yeah, just too anxious to try and make something happen out there. This is about the team, not about you. We're just about two minutes into the first quarter. Collison against Bledsoe. Collison dishes to Oladipo. Bill, always fun to speculate on what a player could be. What's the ceiling, you think, for Giannis Antetokounmpo? MVP. The, I very, think it, the very top. A really good conversation is who's the next MVP? Who is the MVP who hasn't won it yet? And the candidates would be Anthony Davis, Giannis, Jason Tatum, Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid, wow. if he could play 2,500 minutes. Those would be the top five guys you mentioned. And Jason Tatum, I'm talking years from now, but I think those would be my five. I love these young, wonderful players to lead has right. Giannis and Davis not only are the next two MVPs in some order, but I think are the most untradeable guys in the league. And I, I do this piece every year. I used to before I retired. Uh, the trade value column, who has the highest trade value, it's Giannis. I would have Giannis 1A, Anthony Davis 1B. Giannis only because he's a little bit younger. But those are the two most untradeable guys in the league. Milwaukee is hanging up on any phone call from anyone who's like, what if we gave you this guy for Giannis? Click. Yeah, the length and height of Bogdanovich is impressive. Outstanding at slamming it down there when he got the chance. Now here's Bledsoe. Nothing yet on the scoreboard for him. Wide open look. Victor Oladipo grabs the miss. And here's Oladipo. He'll bring it up for Indiana. They trail by one. Defeated by the Wizards in their last game. They'll try to put that one behind them. Yeah, you're just not going to win many committing turnovers at the rate they did. That, that was just outrageous. So hard when it's weighted like that and you're competing and you're making mistakes. And then on the other end, your opponent is playing flawlessly. The Pacers have gone 4-7 from the field, shooting over 50%. Here's Bogdanovich. A miss that time would have put him up. The Bucs have gone 5 of 8 from the field, shooting over 62%. The wide open look here for Lopez and a great assist by Brogdon as that one goes in. Lopez has got five now. Pretty good awareness there from Malcolm Brogdon capable of spotting the open teammate on that side of the ball. Collison against Bledsoe. No one near Turner as he lets it go. Indiana again missing. Bucks leading by four. Lopez kicks to Antetokounmpo. Here's Bledsoe, the rebound by Turner. Right now, he's just out of sync. A lot of shots rimming out, and he's got to try to find something different. Bill, we know when you're writing that you love to incorporate pop culture references. How did that begin with you? Well, it began because in college, I was dropping them in columns, and people were responding. I, I think pop culture probably mattered more when I was in college in the 80s and 90s because, you know, we didn't have the internet back then. People, it was harder to connect with people you didn't know. Basically, you had sports and pop culture and politics. Those were the three ways of, I'm getting to know you. What are the three things we're going to talk about? I didn't want to talk about politics with anybody, so the other two things for me were sports <laughs> pop culture. I was also an only child in the 70s with uh, only five or six TV channels watching Brady Bunch, Partridge Family, Sanford and Son, Jefferson's Good Times, all that stuff. And, you know, that stuff just soaks into your DNA, and that's it. That's good from out of the Kumbo. And, Bill, in talking about the connection between pop culture, sports, and basketball during your career, through it all, you've always been a writer, though, haven't you? Always been a writer. Only that was the only child of me. The thing is, though, I would have watched more basketball, but basketball wasn't on. You know, I try to explain this to people, how lucky they are to be able to watch. They can't believe these finals were taped delayed. Well, just, but think about the day-to-day, -day, right? Like Magic Johnson. I feel like I saw his whole career, but I really didn't. Like, his first couple of years in L.A., they, I think CBS was only showing, like, six or seven regular season games. On Sunday afternoon. In the playoffs, they would bump them off. Yep. Um, USA, I think, got the contract in maybe 1982, but for the most part, like, I love George Gervin. I probably saw him play in person twice, and I saw him wow. on TV maybe 10 times, 12 mm. times. 
and now you, I could watch Giannis every day. And if Giannis dunks, I could see it on Twitter five minutes later, five seconds later. So I think people are lucky. You guys should appreciate how lucky you are out there. <laughs> Here's Evans after Pau Gasol's bucket. Evans outside. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. And how about the numbers here for Evans? Averaging 15 points a game, three assists, and two rebounds. And he's really been pulling his weight. He's had a hand in some big plays here recently. I think you look across the board right now, and he's just doing a much better job. The numbers bear that out. First one falls for him. Sometimes Evans gives you that speed burst, and that makes him so much more difficult to guard. He's a real problem given his size and versatility. Ilya Sova, he's checked in for the Bucks. He hits both from the strike. Kamana Sabonis, the son of the legendary Arvidas Sabonis. Bill, you saw Arvidas play. I was impressed with his game and called a lot of his games. When you think back to the time that, that the elder Sabonis was in the game, what do you remember? Not much. I mean, we saw Sabonis at, at the end. At the end of his career, the equivalent of seeing like Dwayne Wade on the on the uh, Miami last year or something. Mm -hmm. Sabonis in the 80s, by all accounts, was the most talented center maybe other than Bill Walton that we've seen in, for all-around centers. I, I still That's think, quite a statement. Yeah, I think Kareem, just for physical skills and the stuff he brought to the sure. table, is still number one. The skyhook is the greatest shot of all time. But Sabonis was like, could shoot from the outside. He was a Bill Walton-type passer, incredible rebounder, huge. Probably had the biggest head I've ever seen in person. Huge. It was just this big granite block of a head. And unfortunately, uh, you know, we didn't have League Pass back then. We didn't have YouTube. We didn't really have any way to see these guys. So you just kind of heard about the legend of Sabonis. And now you think about fast forward to 2018. Luka Doncic comes into the lottery. And we've all watched him. You go on YouTube. You can watch mm -hmm. the EuroLeague Finals on NBA TV. Right. And I have opinions on this guy. I had no opinions on Sabonis in the mid-'80s, just what people told me. He gets it in there. Well, we've seen that movie a few times, haven't we? An easy bucket in the paint. And so he'll bring it up for the Bucks, Trailing by two. Kicks to Gasol. It's back to Hill. Over Joseph. That's tipped. Evans feeling it out a bit. Matthews, no one around him. The basket good off the assist from Evans. Now it's a five-point pacer lead. How about the passing? They are moving the ball without any thought, without any individual agenda. Outside Gasol. Passes it to Miritich. That's in, and he found his range with that one. Now one for two. Well, we know Miritich can shoot and is willing to shoot, but it's also great to see him get inside and find some points in the paint. Evans, right side. It's good. He makes his first shot of the game. Always a spirited debate, Bill, around the NBA. Which team was the best ever? I know you have an opinion on a lot of this stuff. Yeah, I used to feel really strongly about my opinion on this, but I think basketball has changed so much over this decade that I'm not even positive how you could compare what this Warriors team is versus what... I always thought the 86 Celtics were the best team, but the 86 Celtics were built... I always compared it to uh, a hockey team on a power play. They're just trying to get closer and closer mm -hmm. to the net and crowd the net, and they were just built around getting layups and the best possible shots. The Warriors are built around math and shooting threes and space in the floor. And if you took the 86 Celtics and indoctrinated them in that style for five years, they all would have been shooting threes mm -hmm. and they probably would have done it better than the Warriors, but I don't know. So I almost have like the before after were theirs. I think the Warriors are the best team of the math era, but I still think the 86 Celtics were the best start to finish season, if anyone said. Uh, the dark horse for me was the 0-1 Lakers, the second Lakers team. Mm. 
when Shaq and Kobe, they had won the year before, rocky first few months, and then they figured out whatever they needed to figure out, and Phil Jackson probably sprinkled some Zen fairy dust mm -hmm. on them or whatever he did, and they just ripped through the league, and they came very close to going undefeated in the playoffs. So that would be my dark horse. Shot clock at three for three. Hill. Pacers with the rebound. They lost the last time they faced the Bucks. That one in Milwaukee. Yeah, and they got beat last time these two teams met. And really, free throws were the story. And that one gives them a plus five rebound advantage, Kevin. Now, here is Miritich. He averages more than 12 points a game. That's some dependable production. Good, and it's Hill picking up the assist. Miritich has got his second bucket. Picking back up, Bill, on our discussion of the greatest teams from different eras. What about those Chicago teams with Jordan in the 90s? You know, the best one was probably the 92 team. But I, I really do think the league got a little diluted there in the 90s because of expansion. expansion. I don't think there was, like, the quote-unquote best Bulls team. I think Jordan was so great, he made it look probably a little easier than it was. But... You know, there's teams, they never really went against a great center other than 95 and 96 against Shaq. And, you know, the NBA pretends this never happened, but the Magic beat them when Michael came back from baseball, and Shaq and Horace Grant destroyed them. They were just too big for them. So, you know, for me, I still think that Shaq Kobe 01 team was really great. Like, those guys were averaging 30 points a game each that year. And we're just unstoppable. All the role players are really good. They had Big Shot Rob on that team and Fisher and Brian Shaw, Rick Fox. Like, that was a really good team. But I still think the 86 Celts having four Hall of Famers in the front court, DJ Danny Ainge, the home court advantage, Bird at his peak of his powers. Like, I would still say that. LeBach shooting their third and fourth free throw shots of the night. He misses the free throw. Miritich sometimes gets one-dimensional out there, but I know one thing the coaching staff really loves about him, he brings competitive fire to every game, and, and that's something any coaching staff loves to count on. Brogdon, he's checked in for Pat Connington. Pacers leading by seven. Here's Evans, and he drops in the layup off the glass. Evans has got eight points. And they're beginning to just flat-out fall apart defensively right now, especially on the interior. It's Hill on the wing. He's covered by Joseph. And Miritich kicks to Ilias over. Stolen by Evans. Pass to Hill. 32 seconds left in the first quarter. Here's Gasol. And he overshot that one, missing. And it's Joseph with the ball. He'll bring it up for Indiana. Nine-point game. Evans finds Matthews. Evans trying to get open. Matthews, no good. Yeah, defense timed that out perfectly. Love the aggressiveness. And then they changed the shot's direction. The Bucks have gone two of four at the free throw line. And, and when you got a team percentage of about 81%, uh, you're going to be one of the elites in this league. Now here's Evans. Eight points for him. And it's Bogdanovich in the corner. And the Pacers can't get it to go. Gets it off. And that concludes the first quarter of play. Pacers lead by seven. And the second quarter will get underway just after this short break. The NBA game drawing fans from every culture. And Pau Gasol definitely feeling the love from the Spanish and Latino community. I always notice the fans that uh, support us and make us feel uh, since, pretty much since I got to the NBA, all the Latino fans showed a lot of love and support towards me. So I appreciate it. The game going global and no better ambassador than Pau Gasol. And as the players grow more international, fans from every country and continent, for that matter, finding more and more reason to root for the NBA. 
And if you're just joining us, we've played through one quarter in this one. And before we move on, what do you guys think about what we've seen so far from the Pacers? So far, they've been active, scoring the basketball, built up a little lead here, and looking good. Well, when you come out in the first quarter with that kind of offense, obviously the game plan is in full effect. Let's see if they can keep that momentum going. On the court for Milwaukee here in the second, we've got Malcolm Brogdon, Miritich out there with Brooke Lopez, then there's Bledsoe, and it's Middleton in at the small four. Just four to shoot. Here's Bledsoe, and it falls over the rim and in. Bledsoe's got his first two points of the night. Well, when you're a scorer in the league, it's going to come in all kinds of ways. Bledsoe, that time, with the defense all over him. Bill, several of your books have been bestsellers. How did it feel to see your work so well received around the world? I think I was really happy that the basketball book did well because I spent a long time writing it and it was 700 pages. And when it got mailed to me, it was so big, I thought people would just be terrified of it. And, you know, it turns out. I think out, they embraced the Yeah, size. I think they did. They liked it. I designed it for people to be able to put on their toilet or bring out an airplane <laughs> or whatever they want to do with it. But uh, I was always amazed that there wasn't a basketball book that tried to kind of group all these other books and some of the opinions and all the misinformation. Like the fact that, honestly, the reason I wanted to write the book was just that people thought Will Chamberlain was better than Bill Russell. And yet every single thing written in the 60s was that Bill Russell was better. And all the players would say Bill Russell was better. And when they played together, Bill Russell's team won. So it's like, how do we get to the point where people think Will Chamberlain was better? So it was that and some other stuff that made me want to write the book. And here's Oladipo after Boyan Bogdanovich getting his shot to go from deep. But three, no good. And Milwaukee the other way now. They can look forward to the Quick and Loans Arena after this game in a matchup against Cleveland. That matchup falls in the middle game of this three-game trip. No one covered. You see how skilled Middleton is, ready to pull the trigger, and the defense is going to have to do better. Brogdon against Collison. The rebound by Brogdon. And forcing the miss there. He just knows how to pressure you defensively. You hear a lot about rim protection. This is a good example of how valuable it can be. You got to make that. The defense was far from terrible, but man, that's an easy shot. Oladipo. And it's Young at the elbow. Oladipo taking his time here. Knocks it loose. And Turner kicks to Bogdanovich. Offensive rebound. Good D by Bledsoe. Bucks trail by seven. Here's Lopez. Off target with his three. For Indiana, they've gone two of six in the field in the second quarter so far. Here's Oladipo. And he sinks that one, hitting the back of the rim on the way in. Oladipo's got six. And as Oladipo hones that jump shot, he's got a real chance to be something special. Bill, your long-lost cousin Ben Simmons headlined a tremendous rookie class in 2017. And in fact, people might think it's the best rookie season ever in the history of the league. A lot of good players. I, Simmons, Mitchell, Tatum. Do we count Simmons in that class, though? I guess well, since he won the rookie of the year, let's put him in All right, there. we'll Just put him in there. Technical. I think if you come out of a year of rookies and you get one guy who has a chance to be a franchise guy, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. We had three. If you're doing three a year for 10 years, you, you have the most ridiculous league of all time. I think the talent ebbs and flows, and we've had stretches. Like, I think last decade, in the 2000s, especially, like, from about 03 to 07, 08, like, we were just short all-stars. They were just... We were short a few guys, and you saw teams like the Nets with Jason Kidd made the finals two years in a row, and you saw the Ben Wallace Pistons team actually win the title. With and, no superstars. Right. And you saw, you know, in 06, the Pistons, remember they, they were on pace to win 70 games, mm -hmm. and then four All-Stars? <laughs> the league just wasn't that good, and now it's flipped, and it's so loaded. I, I think from a talent standpoint, as good as any year since 1993. Wow, that's a big statement. Yeah, which 25 years ago, we just loaded with guys who could be Hall of Famer right. someday or, you know, eight-time All-Stars, things like that. So now you look at this 17 class, Simmons, Mitchell, Tatum, just right there, that's awesome. I still believe in Lonzo. 
and I still believe in De'Aaron Fox. I think those guys can be all-stars, mm -hmm. too. Yeah, and he could tell his guys were dragging a little bit, calling time out to kind of let them catch their breath. And here in the second quarter of action, as we approach four minutes played, Collison, the pass to Oladipo. Shoots over Brogdon. The putback. Great positioning on the putback. Turner's got the lead up to 12 now for Indiana. A slight rebound advantage for them. One more column in their favor, and it's all adding up. Middleton finds out to Jacumbo. Here's Lopez. 17 points in his last outing, and the call will be against Thaddeus Young. That's his first foul. Bill, one shot to win a game. You can pick any player. Who's going to take that shot for you? Kevin Durant. I think he has the most ways to get a good shot off. I always look at it as, is it a quality shot to get off? So he can post the smaller guy up. He can shoot a three. He's got the pull-up hezzy jumper, as he calls it. Uh, he can go to the lane and pump fake and do a little drop step. And I just think he has the most move. Some people would say LeBron, but am I getting regular season LeBron or playoff mm -hmm. LeBron? Playoff LeBron. Playoff LeBron would be my number one he'd choice. Be, he'd be pretty good. Yeah, he'd be pretty good. Yeah. Regular season LeBron, I'm not as enthused about. And here's Collison following the three-pointer by Chris Middleton. Collison with it. Eric Bledsoe covering. Bledsoe against Collison. Oladipo for three. It's in the bucket for his fourth field goal. Shooting at a four of nine clip. Slowly and steadily improving. Oladipo, a good three-point shooter, making him more well-rounded as a threat. And onto Takumbo, slams it in. Oh, <laughs> look at the <laughs> handles. Gets through the D and then powers it home. Such a pretty move inside. Clark, how do you stop that? Now, here's Bogdanovich. He had a 12-point outing in their last game against Washington. And Turner throws it down. I love Bogdanovich's ability to put the team first. When he sees one of his guys open, he's a willing ball mover. Collison against Bledsoe. And that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle and two shots coming up. The Bucs shooting their seventh and eighth free throw attempts for the game right here. Free throw good from Bledsoe. Bledsoe so athletic and so explosive. He just continues to get better in a lot of areas out on the floor. Looking at who's out there now for the Pacers. Kyle O'Quinn, he's checked in for Turner. Sabonis comes in for Young. Matthews, he's checked in for Bogdanovich. And Tyreek Evans subbed in for Oladipo. So he makes one of two as the second one misses. Well, he's gotten shots up, but they're not finding the rim. The squad's suffering because of it right now. A bit out of rhythm. And some changes here for the Bucks. Saul comes in for Chris Middleton. And George Hills subbed in for Eric Bledsoe. Evans dishes to Matthews. And there's the foul. It goes on Wesley Matthews. That'll be his second foul of the game. Well, there are good fouls, and then there's those fouls. That's not, not a good one. Limits himself on defense, and he can't nearly be as physical for the rest of the period. And there's the foul, and Darren Collison picks it up. That is his first foul of the game. Gasol kicks to Connaughton. They get a hand on it. Stolen by O'Quinn. Sabonis, the pass to O'Quinn. Matthews, it's good on the putback. And the Pacers lead by 13. And with the success they've had rebounding the basketball, they're right where you'd expect them to be, firmly in the driver's seat. Here's Hill. And a great assist by Anadokounmpo as that one goes in. Well, sometimes being long and athletic can help you finish through contact. George Hill with a great job there. Collison finds O'Quinn. Collison against Hill. 
O'Quinn in the post. Back to Collison. And again, it's the Pacers from deep. <laughs> and that's one way to extend the lead. Continue to light it up from long range. They have all the confidence in the world right now from the three-point line. Now a timeout called by Milwaukee. And I like this timeout. You're getting terrible rim protection right now. Well, you got to ask your team to give you a little bit more effort because there's just not a lot of fire on the defensive end. Corey Joseph's checked in for Darren Collison. And a look at the recent power rankings. Some interesting stories here in the early part of December. A look at Philadelphia. They're gaining on some of the teams above them, trying hard to crack into that top five. And check it out, Indiana. Probably doing exactly what they hoped. Took some time to develop from a chemistry standpoint, but now it seems like they've got it firing on all cylinders. Evan. And two free throws coming up. Unable to get that one to go with all the contact. They get Paul Gasol. Well, no one getting in the way of Evans there. Makes the sprint to the hoop look relatively simple. These are his third and fourth free throw attempts of the game. And that 82% free throw percentage this season must have him feeling pretty good about himself at the line. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. The first one falls. He doesn't get the second one, but they recover it. Sabonis kicks to Evans. There's the pass to Joseph. Now O'Quinn, he's guarded by Hill. Down to five on the shot clock. With some arc. Basket is good. He'll get a chance for one more at the line. And Kevin, they dialed up their activity this quarter. We're seeing them convert a lot of those second chance opportunities. For Indiana, they have gone four for five from the charity stripe in this one up to now. And on the season, you know, they're hitting about 76%, which is a decent rate. One shot. And the free throw, no good. Yeah, a nice job of drawing the contact and creating opportunities at the line. Yeah, field goal percentage above 50 now. Their offense is starting to show. Now here's Evans. He's coming off a 10-point game against Washington. He also did a masterful job in that game of drawing a lot of fouls, so he's creating havoc for the defense. Sabonis with the bucket. Well, Sabonis can play there on the block. That's where he did a lot of damage in college, so him working inside, that's a good sign. Kumbo against Matthews. And, and didn't do anything fancy there, but didn't need to. Nope. He, his only concern right now is getting the points on the board. And I, I don't mean style points. Pass to O'Quinn. Some nice passing here by Indiana. Pass break. Milwaukee. And the slam dunk by Antetokounmpo. This guy upping his scoring average every year. Tonight's effort's only going to increase the chances of Giannis to do that again maybe this season. Now here's Evans. 11 points in the game. And it's Joseph in the corner. Up again. And there's Evans putting it right back in. Evans has got 13. They have been board dominant in this game. That's definitely been a factor in crafting this huge lead. And so on to Kumbo looking over it. Here's Connaughton. O'Quinn defending. Connaughton passes to Ana Kumbo. And that one is good. He's got 14. The defense not putting up any fight on the inside. They've allowed 10 straight points in the paint. Joseph with the ball. 
He's averaging around five and a half points a game. He kicks it to Matthews. He's watching him. He's coming. He's coming. It's Evans on the wing. Six on the shot clock. No good. That's the first shot for the floor. He's missed. Five for six. Bucks trail by 13. D2 from Hill. And misses it off the right side of the rim. Indiana's gotten a lot of looks from outside tonight. Five of 12. Bobbed up there for Evans. Sabonis kicks to Matthews. No good from outside. I think what I'd like to see from him in this quarter is getting going from the perimeter. Hit a three in the first, nothing in the second. The Bucks have shot five of eight from the foul line. That free throw, no good. Now we can talk about it over and over again, Kevin. Atentacumpo combines size and versatility in ways we just haven't seen, at least up until the Greek Freak's arrival. And Indiana making a change here. Holiday's checked in. Miritich has checked in for Milwaukee. Tony Snell comes in for Pat Connaughton. Now here's Evans. He's got 13. And play stops. Whistle on what looks to be an illegal screen. Yeah, and checking out the numbers for Anna Takumpo. Over the last month, he has been spectacular. Third in shooting percentage. Fourth in scoring. And he's a defensive ball hawk. You can't let your guard down. Remember, he's 10th in the league in steals per game. And it's a strong accomplishment. Third best in field goal percentage. He just refuses to take bad shots. That's why his coaches love him. Good. The assist goes to Hill. Hill's got three assists tonight. Now, you could just tell in his gait and in the look on his face, he's in a great rhythm after a terrific first quarter. He is feeling it here in the second. Now, here is Holiday. Taking a look at his stance, he's averaging around seven and a half points a game. A shot by Sabonis, nobody around, and the Pacers can't get it to go. Bucks trail by 10. Three pointers, Snell, and another three for Milwaukee. The ball movement on this run has been fantastic and is a big part of why they've been able to get these good looks. Evans outside. Onto Dekumbo against Matthews. The kick out to Holiday. Trying to get something going. Hill with some nice D. I'm just wondering why the defense is laying off. Luckily, they did. Oh. Yes, sir. I think Giannis loves that kind of stuff right there. His dunks sometimes get vicious. And a great second look there. Another Unleash Chaos Report. Brought to you by the Under Armour Hover Havoc. Now here is Holiday. Addition out to O'Quinn. Rejected by Gasol. Gasol did not stop moving his hands there, especially as the shot was going up. Always going to be right there to send anything back if it's close. That free throw good from Gasol. And Pau Gasol really on the tail end of what has been a Hall of Fame career. He's a two-time champion, international star, nothing left to prove, but still manages to put up points with his sharp approach to the game. Looking at who's out there now for the Bucks. Chris Middleton's checked in for Giannis Antetokounmpo. Malcolm Brogdon comes in for Tony Snell. And Eric Bledsoe subbed in for George Hill. Here's Brogdon following the score by Miles Turner. Middleton for three. One second separate in the shot clock and game clock. Here's Oladipo. The basket good off the assist from Evans. Evans has got five assists in the game. You know, we talk so much about accurate shooting. Sometimes accurate passing can lead to great shooting. You saw it there. Bloodsoe against Evans. Bloodsoe outside. Over Evans. Well, Evans now getting after it defensively using his quickness and his length to pester the shooter. And so it's Indiana. Heading to the bench with a seven-point lead as we wrap up the quarter. They're feeling very confident, shooting the ball with great efficiency and dictating the pace. And now we'll send it over to David Aldridge, who is standing by courtside. David. Thanks, Kevin. Here with Coach Mike Budenholzer. Coach, probably not the defensive effort you were hoping for thus far. 
Yeah, no, our defense isn't where it needs to be. I think they're getting open looks. We're over shifting and then we're not committing to shooters. Um, just not a very good defensive effort so far. Mike, thanks very much for your time. Kevin, back to you. Thanks so much, Dave, for the great interview. Don't go away, folks. We'll be back for the second half of basketball right after this. It's the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Welcome back to you, 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 I guess, and you. not you. Not him? You. Oh, her, for sure. Them. Yes. This is Ernie Johnson. That's Kenny. That's Shaq. You're watching the NBA Halftime Show on 2K Sports. Tyreek Evans putting in some serious work for the team tonight. He had 13 points, two rebounds, and one steal. And uh, Shaq, what did you see out there from the Pacers? Well, Kenny knows about this. I used to do this to his team all the time. Take advantage of you down low. Mismatch. Barbecue chicken alert. Make good entry passes. That led to some good looks. Obviously, a lot of points. When you control the pain, Ernie, you control the game. I was the master of controlling thy paint. Shaquille Kiss. And over to Kenny, your thoughts on the Bucks. Well, one problem I see is that they're too timid on the board. When you start to fall behind in the game, you need to become more aggressive on the offensive glass and the defensive glass. And that should do it. With the second half about to begin, let's send you back to Kevin Harlan. Go back to Kevin Harlan. Go. Just go over there. Downtown Indianapolis glowing in the distance as we welcome you back to the action here at Banker's Life Fieldhouse. We played through the first half. Plenty of basketball, though, left in this one. You look at Anadokounmpo in this one. He's been everywhere. And I love the game plan in that first half. They really valued each possession. Uh, efficient so far with the shots that he's taken. His contributions have been fantastic. Pacers leading by seven. Down low, it's Young and Turner. Collison and Oladipo are the guard set. And it's Bogdanovich in at the three spot. So that's the group out there for Indiana. Feeds it to Young. Six on the shot clock. One on one here. Here's Antetokounmpo. And Antetokounmpo slams it in. Middleton's got such a great wingspan. That comes into play on steals just like that one. Two points. That one goes. Young's got his second bucket. And we always talk about making your teammate better. That assist was right on target. Out of kicks to Brogdon. Here's Middleton. And a great assist by Brogdon as that one goes in. Brogdon's got three assists tonight. Well, at 235 pounds, Middleton is hard to throw off balance. So he can take that contact and still finish through. Now here's Turner back to Collison. It's Bogdanovich on the wing. A three-pointer is right on target. Bogdanovich has got 11 points. And Bogdanovich is a consistent shooter from outside. Once he's in rhythm, he's comfortable from firing from beyond. Bogdan against Oladipo. For three, Middleton. And the rebound goes to the Pacers. 17 points was their biggest margin. Down low, here's Young. And the Pacers tack on two more. Man, sharp here to start the half. That's three in a row. Bucks trail by ten. And Middleton kicks to out of the combo. Here's Lopez. And the dunk by Lopez. And that's such solid fundamental basketball on display right there, guys. You, you talk about it all the time, Greg. Yeah, great use of the pick to set up a dunk. Well, that's a play that only works by practicing over and over and having a great rhythm with your teammate. You could see the timing there. Yep, it counts. He has five. Well, great start. Check that box. They've made their first four shots, guys, and the offense looking very fluid right now. Bloodsoe outside. Connects from three-point range. Oh, wow. Four or five to start the half coming out on fire. Collison dishes to Bogdanovich. 
Just over two and a half minutes gone by here in the second half. From deep. That one misses. And Milwaukee will come the other way. Well, the Bucks with the superstar talent in Giannis Attentacupo, the critical Timeout. decision this summer Sorry. for selecting a new coach came down to a very qualified one in Mike Budenholzer. And with all the options out there, nine coaching changes, I think that Bud saw the opportunity in Milwaukee as being a great one to push this team a little bit forward. Uh, the talent on the roster tantalizing enough for him to head to Milwaukee after his stint in Atlanta. Now that we have a second, take a look at the teams that have scored the most points off turnovers over the last 10 games. The Pacers fourth, fifth best, the Bucks. You have both of these teams of late forcing turnovers and converting them into offense at the other end. And Mike Budenholzer, the 2015 Coach of the Year, four titles, Brent, as an assistant in San Antonio. How do you like the fit for him now in Milwaukee? Well, I think that the players are, are going to really enjoy the attention to detail that Coach Bud and his entire staff who are coming with him will put into place. There's an efficiency with which they'll get the work done. And uh, they're going to have to be thinking on their feet, learning a new offense and some things fundamentally on defense that he'll get them excited about. You always hear about chemistry. That's a perfect example, knowing where each other is at all times. Collison finds Young. To the middle. Here's Turner. It's good. Now he's shooting six for seven. And guys, the D has to show a little more fight on the interior than they did on that trip. Now a timeout called by Milwaukee. And for his whole career, Thaddeus Young has been a player not afraid, Greg, of attacking defenders head on. Young has such a great first burst of speed. He really is a handful to deal with. G gets a lot of transition buckets that way. And in the half court, can set up teammates by creating space. In the latter part of his career, I think he's taken on more of a vocal leadership role as well. Stolen by Collison. Outside, Bogdanovich launches it. They get it back. Here's Turner. Some solid defense from Antetokounmpo. You can't miss those kind of looks. The defense seems to be a little nonplussed so far in this one, but he flat out missed it. Well, he now has four three-pointers this game, guys. Two in each half. He's really spacing out the floor for his teammates. Now here's Middleton. Ten points for him. And the rebound goes to the Pacers. Oladipo's got four rebounds in this game. Kicks it to Young. Over on Takumbo. And he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. Brent, the league playing at a faster pace overall now. Will there ever come a time when every team will play with that same speed? No, because one team will always be faster than the next. So it's, it's never going to be exacting for every ball club. And as you and I have talked several times, Kevin, you got to play to your strengths. And even though teams are finding more positionless basketball players, some of these guys have attributes to their game where you want to get them in certain positions. That takes time. It's all about personnel. It's all about your personnel. And again, putting those guys in the proper place where they can succeed more often. Well, that's some good O there. Always like to see them getting those interior looks. To the inside. Lays it in off a pretty alley-oop. How about the attitude of Bogdanovich? When he's got it going, he's looking to fire it every time. And so it's Bledsoe with it, bringing it up for Milwaukee. They trail by nine points. In the corner, Middleton with it. Lets it go with a three. Bogdanovich grabs the miss. And that's a rare sight. Usually shooters make the defense pay when they're that lackadaisical. Shots good from Young. Now right now they're winning because of him. Love the shots that he's taking, and he's got the green light. Bucks trail by 11. Ludzo passes to Ilya Sova. Brogdon with it. Now defended by Oladipo. Cranes it from beyond the arc. Middleton's got seven points for the quarter. Watch out. Now that he's got his first three of the half, there might be more in store. Collison inside. Guarded by Bledsoe. Oladipo misses. Deflects the pass. For Milwaukee, they've gotten eight of their 11 shots to drop since the break. 
a great third quarter for them offensively. And that one's good, Brogdon. Well, a great job by Brogdon there. Terrific at shooting off the dribble and finding some balance. Timeout call, the Pacers. Well, amazingly, the Bucks, one of the slower teams in the league last season in terms of their pace. And when you're talking about a team with tremendous length and athleticism, you think that maybe speed would come along with it and that they get out and thrive in transition. Not the case last year. So an entirely new group in now for Indiana. Kyle O'Quinn is checked in for Turner. Sabonis comes in for Young. Wesley Matthews checked in for Oladu. And Tyreek Evans is subbed in for Darren Collison. Milwaukee also making some changes. Miritich is checked in for Lopez. And it's Hill in for Malcolm Brogdon. Sabonis has to use good timing in order to block shots. That time he did. Matthews against Bledsoe. A nice shot by Bogdanovich. And the Bucks still a top 10 offense last season. Got to the line in bunches. They got to the line, got into the interior, got into the paint. But their outside shooting is still a concern, Kevin. When you're down a lot of points uh, and you need to stretch out the defense to, to come back in games, it's not something that they could do last year. So maybe looking to pick up a few guys on their roster to help expand the three-point shooting game. And the Bucks making a change here. Gasol's checked in. Passes it to Middleton. Launches a three. Sinks the three-pointer. Middleton's got a pair of threes now here in the third for Milwaukee. Yeah, this team would be in some bad shape, guys, if he wasn't scoring like this right now. Evans kicks to Bogdanovich. Pass to O'Quinn. Indiana moving it around. Shot clock at six. Back to Evans. Shoots the three. And it's Gasol with the rebound. Gasol's got his fifth rebound right now in the game. Middleton can't get it to go. And listen, you can't design a play any better to get a look that good. Just couldn't knock it down. Uh, the best players know that is going to happen, and you just can't let it get into your head. It's a shot that you want to take. And so it's Milwaukee with it. Seven-point differential. Once so, taking his time here. Offline with his three. Well, he's using the force, but in the worst way possible right now. He just needs to dial it back and look to work the ball around the floor to his teammates. And there's the foul. It goes on Wesley Matthews. That's his fourth foul of the contest. And that's his fourth, and no doubt he would have liked to have not gotten it this soon. Hill against Evans. Bloodsoe outside. Inside, Gasol dishes to Middleton. Lock at six. Launches a three. Good. The assist goes to Hill. Hill's got assist number five here tonight. Yeah, the D with very little pressure on their perimeter shooters. Three of the last five baskets they've allowed have been from beyond. Now here's Evans. He's got 13. Trying to get open is Bogdanovich. And it's Evans missing. Bucks trail by four. Now the feed to Miritich, and he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. Ashley Matthews picks one up. Yeah, more of this from Miritich would be a good thing for this ball club when he's aggressive inside. He's capable of drawing contact and finding some freebies. So Miritich nails both of them. Well, Miritich last year, it was the tale of two halves. It was the shaved year versus the, the unshaved year for, for him. Great start with the Bulls and played some very good basketball and then struggled a little bit after the trade to the Pelicans. And then, boom, all of a sudden was a huge part after Cousins went down. Was extremely complimentary to the fast pace and stretching out the offense with the three-point ball playing alongside AD. And so it's Matthews with it, bringing it up now for the Indiana Pacers. And it's Bogdanovich in the corner. 
for Middleton. And he wills that one in, sinking right through off the back iron. Right, you're talking about Miritich. The real Miritich is somewhere in between. Yeah, he's had a little trouble with consistency, but you got to look at what was surrounding him in Chicago with all the roster movements and the coaching changes, stylistic changes. So, you know, when he gets on, we saw this late in the year with the Pelicans and somewhat in the playoffs, he can be an explosive scorer. He can put the ball down and make plays. Uh, he, he can shoot you into and sometimes out of the game. Now, here's O'Quinn. Good work defensively by Gasol. The defensive reaction time, it was just immediate on that one. And sometimes the most important part of that is the angle that the defender chooses. That time, he chose wisely. Well, the defense looked lost there. Get out your compass. No excuses. you got to guard the perimeter. On the wing, Evans. He's guarded by Hill. Sabonis picks to Bogdanovich. Trying to come right back with the three of his own, but it's no good. Guys, we've seen some excellent offensive output. Yeah, great momentum for them offensively. The Pacers making a switch here. Young's checked in, and Milwaukee with a change here, too. Ante de Kumbos checked in. And there's the pass to Gasol. Back to Middleton. Knocked away. And out of bounds as the Pacers gain possession. Here's a look now at what's coming up for the Milwaukee Bucks. On Friday, they'll take on Kevin Love and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Then on Monday, they'll be playing against Blake Griffin and the Detroit Pistons. And, and Kevin, I think you have to look at this as an opportunity to take a step forward. Sometimes tough road trips can bring the best out of a team and bring you closer together. Now, here is Young. Nine points in the game so far. Sabonis, blanketed by the D, he fights to the rim for the layup. Sabonis has got 10 points in the game. And the Bucks with possession here. They trail by one. Here's Butso. Not going to go that time. So Indiana will take it the other way. Young in the corner. It's stolen by to Takumbo. Here's Budso. The Pacers pull it in. O'Quinn's got nine rebounds now tonight. And Young, here we go. Evans against Budso. Matthews finds Young. It's so about it's a Kumbo. And the foul on Kyle O'Quinn. And that'll be his third foul so far. Some changes for Indiana. Turner comes in for Kyle O'Quinn. And it's Oladipo in for Tyreek Evans. The Bucks also with the sub. Malcolm Brogdon's checked in for Chris Middleton. Now here's Bledsoe. He's got 10. Drills the three-pointer. He's got 13. And defensively, you have got to extend to their shooters. They have been on fire this half. Yeah, and then the fear sets in that you're going to create driving lanes that could lead to easy buckets. This is not an easy fix. Gasol with the steal. Here's Antetokounmpo, and Antetokounmpo slams it in. And you've got to give them a lot of credit for just battling back into this game. Well, there's an ebb and a flow. They had a hard time earlier, but now, flow. Shot and game clock separated by five. Pass to Sabonis. It's so to Antetokounmpo. Pass break, Milwaukee. Bledsoe's running, and it's sent back by Turner. And they'll keep possession. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Pacers will take it. Now Oladipo shoots over Brogdon. That's tipped. And offensively, a great show for the fans through the first three quarters. It's been a fun game to watch. Bucks ahead, up by four. And we're coming right back. Be sure to stay with us as we get started for the fourth quarter. How about a look at today's State Farm assist of the game? 
And the definition of teamwork right there, guys. I mean, what great communication between them, and, and what a beautiful feat. The coaches talk about it all the time, but to be able to play with that kind of feel, nice play collaborating, improvising, and organic. And with three quarters behind us, we start the fourth quarter in what is still anybody's ballgame. Our fourth quarter action underway, presented by Gatorade. All fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset the lineups. And Milwaukee, looking at who they've got. Thomas is down low with Lopez. Bledsoe is out there with Brogdon. And it's Miritic in at the small forward position. Here's Anta Takumbo. And the basket is good. Anta Takumbo's got the fourth quarter going with the first basket of the period here for the Bucks. Oladipo outside. Back to Collison. He kicks to Turner. Five on the clock. Stolen by Brogdon. Bloodsoe outside. The shot that time, not on target. Great D that time from Collison. Hey, even though he's been off, the team's still winning, so the hope is that he's going to get going. Here's Oladipo. Good on the shot. And finishing inside something Oladipo has worked on, learning to deal with NBA size down low. Sabonis against on the Kumbo, and he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. When you think about a coach looking into the eyes of one of his players and telling him to match up with Giannis Antetokounmpo and all the things that he brings to the table, that's a that's a long night of restlessness before you match up. Press up on him, he'll blow by you in transition. He's at the rim and two dribbles. Tough to stop Super that two. kid. And he knocks down the first one. Antetokounmpo covers so much ground, Brett. He can almost go the entire length of the court in two dribbles. Well, once he gets uh, around towards the rim, his reach can make it seem like defenders aren't even there. Not just one defender, but multiple defenders. So it's, it's unfair already, and you add that athleticism to what he can do. Wow, unstoppable offensive force. So one for two that time at the strike. And Brent, you look at Giannis Antetokounmpo's slashing game, standing what may be a hair under seven foot tall. How do you even put it into words? Well, it's hard to imagine a more perfect frame for today's game in terms of getting in transition, having a versatile offensive game, putting it down, getting to the rack. Well, the one thing that we're anxious to see is whether or not Giannis will develop the type of range from the three-point line that makes it respectable. Other than that, he's pretty much unstoppable. We're about two minutes into the fourth quarter in this one. Kicks it to Bloodsoe. And a great assist by Anadokounmpo as that one goes in. 16 points for Eric Bloodsoe. Pacers trail by four. It's Young on the wing. Off target with his three. For Milwaukee, they've gone two for five. On field goal attempts in the fourth quarter. And onto Takumbo, slams it in. Watching that guy put on a burst of speed, he takes up so much of the floor with a burst by Giannis. Collison against Bloodsoe. Collison, the pass to Turner. Oladipo outside. It's good from long range. Oladipo's got seven points for the quarter. Oladipo constantly looking to score. As soon as the ball hits his hands, he's ready to pull. Bloodsoe outside. Tipped away. And oh, here we go. Young's got it. The fast break chance. He feeds it to Oladipo. And Turner kicks to Oladipo. Whistle blows. Basket is good. So a chance here for a three-point play. And he's coming up big here in the clutch. And you can feel that Oladipo was on the verge 
of a breakthrough, and boy, did he ever. Uh, everything came together for him, and he is now not only an elite scorer, but an all-star. Can attack from any distance and has a variety of ways to hurt the defense. Bogdanovich, he's checked in for the Pacers. And it's tied up with that one. And for Oladipo, Greg, there wasn't just one moment that gave him that push. I mean, his development was less of having a, a eureka moment and, and more of everything just coming together. Uh, has always had the strong athleticism, has refined his shot to make the most of it, and while it took him some time, he's now the player everyone hoped he'd be when he was the second overall pick. And so it's Indiana with it, following the three by Milwaukee. Turner dishes to Oladipo. And he can't answer back. The three-pointer offline. Young with the steal. Here's Collison. He drains the quick shot. Now is not the time to be giving him that kind of shot. Well, there never really is, but you're right, especially coming down the stretch of a tight game. He's a guy you got to pay much closer attention to defensively. That's good from out of the Kumbo. Mirotic has checked in for Ilya Sova. Oh, free throws good from Adetokounmpo. And right now at about 85% from the line, that's up from where it was in that first half. Collison finds Turner. It's Oladipo on the wing. A three-pointer off the mark. Bucks leading by three. To the inside. Here's Antetokounmpo. And the slam dunk by Antetokounmpo. Yeah, sometimes it takes a while for all that length in Giannis to catch up to those feet. But once he does, man, he can explode. Stolen by Brogdon. And stolen by Bogdanovich. And contact on the shot. So he'll be shooting free throws here. Yeah, nice, strong finish there. Nearly a three-point opportunity. And for the most part, when Bogdanovich is out on the floor, he's there to do one thing, <laughs> shoot. And I tell you what, when you can shoot like that, that's all you need to do. Great catch-and-shoot player who can stretch the defense. You cannot leave him alone. And really, his presence frees up so much for his teammates on the floor. And that's good as he hits both of his shots. And Bogdanovich is a confident, efficient player. A guy who can play either the two or three spots on the floor. Nice shot from the wing. Bogdanovich has got four points this quarter. Well, you see the excellent skill set. And this is when you want to make an impact. I feel like there's an uptick in the intensity as well. Fourth quarter and it's closing time. Oh, and he went for the two-hander on the slam using some muscle. Some urgency from him there. Sure. Collison, the pass to Bogdanovich. Back to Collison. Baseline J on the way. And again, it's Indiana converting. And it's great to see Bogdanovich spreading the ball out. I mean, possesses good size, which allows him to see over defenders. And there's the foul, and Darren Collison picks it up. That'll be his second foul of the game. Here's Antetokounmpo over Bogdanovich. Yeah, and I like the aggressiveness from Bogdanovich. Does an awesome job staying with his man and just making things difficult. And I like the fact that the defense is looking to protect the rim at all costs. Ties it up, and this next one could give them the lead. Oladipo can be so explosive, long and lengthy. I'd like to see him continue to get better. And that drops, so they now lead by one. And so Andre Dekumba will bring it up for Milwaukee. 
Turner with the steal. Here's Oladipo. Giannis Antetokounmpo grabs the miss. Antetokounmpo's got 10 rebounds here tonight. So active. And the foul on Victor Oladipo. That's foul number two for him. And the next one puts him in the bonus. Lopez against Turner. Here's onto Takumbo. Goes back up. And he lays it up and in. Onto Takumbo's got 17 points here in the second half. Indiana's gotten just one of four three-pointers to go down for them here in the fourth. Collison kicks to Bogdanovich. Tries it from 19. Bulls up. Bogdanovich has got six here in this quarter. Yeah, Bogdanovich, a high percentage score, an efficient shooter, and he loves that mid-range area. Here's onto Takumbo, and that one good. And the Bucks lead by one. They're finding lanes to the hoop now with consistency. Five buckets in a row from the paint. Here's Collison, Milwaukee with the rebound. The shot by Ante Takumbo, nobody around. Good, and Bledsoe gets the assist. Bledsoe's got five assists in the game. Ludzo against Collison. Gets the bucket and the foul. That's on Brooke Lopez. You know what? The switch has flipped, and he's in that proverbial zone right now, knocking down three of four here in the fourth. throw good Darren Collison you know when you think of Darren Collison uh, I think of a smart point guard it had two seasons playing understudy to Chris Paul in both New Orleans and LA similar type of players who are very efficient and just gets the job done and with Collison and how he plays when he's off the floor you notice I mean things just don't seem to run as smoothly when he's not at the helm Finds that balance between creating for himself and others. Selective with his shots and truly a complete guard, even if he doesn't do a lot of those flashy things. Now, here's Collison. Oladipo misses. Like the tactics on defense there, refusing to give the shooter the easy layup at the rim. And the foul called on Boyan Bogdanovich. So that will be his second foul of the game. We're in the bonus, and we'll go to the line to shoot two. And last season, a, a bit of a breakout for Miritich. Saw a huge jump in his production and shot a career best from the floor. Across the board, he was a completely changed player despite what was a turbulent season. Now, here's Oldie. Six to shoot. Young outside. A three-pointer, no good. Milwaukee leading by four. And with Miritich, Greg, as you alluded, his year last year he had a lot of ups and downs. You know, he missed a good stretch of the season with, with that broken jaw uh, from the fight he had with, with the teammate. And then the trade demands to get out of Chicago shortly after coming back. And despite all this, his defense and rebounding were dramatically improved and really a key contributor on offense. That free throw, good from Turner. And when you see Miles Turner play on the offensive side of the ball, the amount of skill he has at his age is just amazing. Yeah, already a great pick-and-pop player. 
you know, not going to be much of a banger down low, but has enough touch outside where he won't need to be. But while he's still a, a work in progress offensively, I think he's shown that he has a very high ceiling in terms of his skill set. And he's taking care of the hard part tonight, which is getting to the line. But, but he hasn't finished the job once he gets there. Oladipo against Brogdon. And there's the three-second call, this one on the defense. And the technical free throw, missing that time. They'll retain possession here, however. And the ceiling Turner has is impressive. Has the potential to be a dominant big man in this league. And the foul on Eric Bledsoe. That's his first foul of the game, and the bonus will go to the free throw line. That free throw missing. And he's good on the second. Bucks leading by three. That shot is off. Good work defensively by Turner. Yeah, this is a terrible start for him, and it has to be weighing on him. Bloodso kicks to Miritich. Let's go. Here's onto Takumbo, and that one is good with the extra effort on the glass. Onto Takumbo's got 43 points. And the Pacers call time here. And they're picking up a lot of fouls already in the penalty. Not a good sign. They need to focus on moving their feet and maintaining a good defensive position. And now the presentation of our Jordan player of the game, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Yeah, and his performance has been a jaw dropper. He must have been feeling great coming into the building tonight. Because once he hit the court, it was all working for him. He was in a zone. Sabonis, so he's checked in for Thaddeus Young. On the sideline, let's catch up with Hall of Famer David Aldridge. Hey, guys, I was able to hear Nate McMillan talk to his team during the break. No surprise, he was not happy with the turnovers. He told them, we are giving this one away, guys. We've got to be more careful with the ball. Play within the offense and get good open shots. Kevin? Thank you, David. Now, here's Collison. And it's Bogdanovich in the corner. From outside the arc. Rebound, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Milwaukee's gone two for two from three-point land to start the fourth quarter. It's stolen by Oladipo. Here's Turner, and he could not get that one to go. A lot of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. That's on Brooke Lopez. And that one falls for Turner. Free throws good from Turner. Seems like the more that's at stake, the more he rises to the challenge. Timeout called the Bucks, And he could tell his guys starting to wear down a little bit. Call time to just let them get their legs back under them. Turner with the steal. Here's Bogdanovich. That falls. Great assist by Darren Collison. And that's 28 points for Boyan Bogdanovich. And it's Anadokounmpo penetrated. Goes up and lays it nice and easy. And the Bucks lead by three. Now, so exciting to see the growth of the Greek freak. There are shots that stars sink, and that's a momentum changer right there. Collison kicks to Turner to the right side to the inside 
And that one goes out of bounds. Last touch by Oladipo. And the score being this close, you have to retain possession of the ball. You just can't give it away like that. And so Adetokounmpo will bring it up for Milwaukee. Banked in off the glass. Adetokounmpo's got 47 points. Now Giannis just plays so hard. What's not to like about the approach he has game in and game out? The shot by Turner, no good. A highlight reel play all the way. Just can't connect. Man, what a missed opportunity there. Really just came down to some poor timing. And it's Turner finishing it off. And, and Kevin, maybe the play of the game right there. A tremendous instant spray to come up with a steal and then attack the basket. Well, the other part is just reading the crucial moment. That's a clutch move right there. It could change the outcome of the game. And defensively, neither side able to get many stops. Well, it's one of those nights where if a team down the stretch can get one or two stops, they may win it. One ten left in the fourth quarter. Bloodsoe outside. Here's out to Takumbo, and that one hits back iron. And he completely threw the timing off on that jumper. That is how you do up. Playing with tremendous aggressiveness without fouling. It's an excellent job. And he's an automatic finisher when he gets into that area. He is, and he picks the simple one-hand stuff to get the two points. Just active defensively here being extremely disruptive like the aggressiveness and a great effort just to get a hand on it sinks it this is why you got to love where Giannis is in the young part of his career willing to drain a crucial shot for his ball club stolen by Brogdon and the foul on Victor Oladipo that's his third foul so far on his situation in effect so we'll head to the free throw line for two he hits the first one and that increases their lead to six So he goes two for two at the lock, and it's a seven-point game. And he adds to their lead with some very solid free throws. Good! And now they trail by just four. A confidence shown from Oladipo. He wants that shot in that moment. And they go to the intentional foul. He hits the first one, and that puts them up by five. And so he drops them both. It's a six-point ball game. What a big possession right here. No doubt about it, guys. The tension is palpable. Eight-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. It's Bogdanovich on the wing. From the arc. Milwaukee with the rebound. And they go to the intentional foul. First free throw is good, and that makes it a seven-point lead. And he hits both free throws here. So now it's an eight-point game. Time called here. Indiana decides to talk it over. They trail by eight. 17 seconds left to play here in the fourth. What's your take, guys? And just trying to salvage anything at this point, even if it's just some momentum heading into the next one. Well, it's all about doing your best with the time that you've been given. It's the only thing, really, that you can control as a player. So let's see what they decide to run. And here's Sabonis. The three from Joseph. It's money from deep. And now we've got the intentional foul. He drops the first one, and that increases their lead to six. George Hill is a gear-shifting, versatile guard and has some size and a good perimeter defender with that length. And so he drops them both. It's a seven-point game. And for three, Collison, it's not going to go for him. And so the Bucks take the win. 
This was a hard-fought, well-earned victory for him, Greg. They really had to work for this win. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, weaker teams might have buckled at the end with the crowd amped up, everyone in the building kind of rooting against you. But they stood tall and, and pulled it out. Well said. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge, standing by courtside. David. Thanks, Kevin. Here with Eric Bledsoe. Eric, a strong performance tonight. What's been the difference? Uh, we're getting out of transition, you know, trying to get defense to stop. And everybody's just playing their game. And it showed tonight, Eric. Thanks very much. Back to you, Kevin. All right, David, thank you. And that about wraps it up. So for David Aldridge, Greg Anthony, Brent Berry, and the whole 2K Sports crew, this is Kevin Harlan thanking you for being with us. See you later.